Excuse me, hey! Would you like to purchase this tire iron? No thanks! Alright, welcome back. If you're brand new to driving, we're gonna go over some of the basics of your car. Disclaimer, this module will describe most cars. However, there are some newer fancy cars where these controls might be in different places. When you approach your car, look for any obvious problems like a flat tire or maybe some fluid leaking out onto the driveway. That is no bueno. When you get in, be sure to lock the doors. You never know who wants to open it. Can I come in? and slice your throat. No, sweet little old lady, go find your own ride. After you start the car, you adjust your seat and then your mirrors. The seat will have levers you can pull that will move the seat back and forth or up and down. This control might also be a sliding button. On the driver's side door, you'll see the window controls and then mirror controls are usually pretty close by. Your lights will be on your left lever and will twist forward to go on. And sometimes that's on the left side of the dash next to the wheel. To put your bright lights on, you just push the lever forward until it sticks. You'll see a blue light pop up in your dash lights. That's how you know they're working. We only use our brights at night when other cars aren't close, so we don't blind them. If someone is blinding you with their brights, you can pull it towards you a couple of times to signal to them that they left their brights on. Click, click. Oh, those are your regular lights? I'm so sorry. And if your car is equipped with fog lights, the symbol will look like this. On the same left lever, we also have our turn signals. Down to turn left and up to turn right. The arrow will then show up on your dash until you turn the wheel or turn it off yourself like after a gentle lane change. You left your signal on. Was that gentle enough? Todd, you scared the crap out of me. Why are you still here? I had to come back to get my sunglasses. Oh, Todd. Later, bro. The emergency flashers will be a symbol that looks like this. The location of this one really depends on the car you're driving. Most often it's on the dash, but sometimes it's on the top of the steering wheel. If you're old school and drive a van, of course. <laughs> hey, I live in a van. Why does that not surprise me? Yeah. On the other side, you have your windshield wipers. You twist these forward to turn on, and there are a few settings, normal, fast, and intermittent. For a light sprinkle, use intermittent. If you push in this lever, it'll spray washer fluid out for a proper cleaning. Some cars with hatchbacks will have a rear wiper as well. I used to have a rear wiper, then my mom potty trained me. Underneath the steering column, you'll have a lever that you pull out to adjust the steering wheel closer. Oftentimes you'll have your cruise control buttons on your steering wheel, along with buttons to control your music or entertainment system. My wife's got a DVD player skip button for all those dumb songs you sing in the car. And of course, the middle of the steering wheel is your horn. <laughs> the gear shift will have several letters to indicate which gear your transmission is in. P is for park, R for reverse, N is neutral, and D is drive. And sometimes you'll have an M or S for manual shifting or sport mode, or maybe a one, two, three for lower gears. Those are helpful on steep hills. And usually pretty close to the gear shift is the parking brake or emergency brake. Sometimes it's a stick that you pull up to set with a push button release. Some bigger cars like trucks and SUVs or minivans have this below near your left foot. Other cars have a button that controls this. Same as the stick, you pull up to set and push down to release. And many newer cars have automatic parking brakes. That's very helpful on the drive test. Sure is. On the dash, there are a lot of lights. I'll go over the most common ones, but if you ever have any questions about dashboard lights, refer to the owner's manual. It's hidden in the dash, underneath all the parking tickets. This is the check engine light. When this comes on, it could be pretty serious, so be sure to have it checked out right away. By a qualified mechanic. What about my brother-in-law, Steve? He can fix cars. Okay, take it to Steve. I don't care. It's your car. Next is the oil pressure light, meaning you're getting pretty low and you'll need to check that out. The battery light will go on if you're having trouble getting the car started. ABS stands for anti-lock brakes. If this light goes on, you gotta get your brakes checked out. This little car with the squiggly lines is for vehicle stability assistance. If this mode is turned off, you might struggle with traction in the rain or snow. That's a good one to leave on unless you want to skid. <laughs> if you catch my drift. This tire with an exclamation point means your tire is low or flat. This little leaf is the econ mode. It should save you some gas by downgrading your car's power. 
The brake light or a beeping sound means you accidentally left the emergency brake on. Plus the car will feel like it's struggling. A steering wheel with an exclamation point means your power steering might be damaged or out of fluid. Good luck cranking that. That's what she said. This little gas pump means you're low on fuel, and that comes on when you only have about a gallon or two left, so get to the gas station pretty quickly. Unless you drive a Tesla, then you better get to the electric pump. If you hear a beeping sound as you're driving off, it's probably your seatbelt reminder. You can fix that by jabbing a knife in there. ACC is Adaptive Cruise Control. You can set this on long road trips when there isn't a lot of traffic. And if you're driving along and the car is beeping at you when you go outside the lane, that's your lane departure software. If this is going off quite a bit, then you could push a button to disable it. Or you could just drive centered in the lane. Don't want to overcomplicate things. But I like the beeping sound. It makes me feel dangerous. Todd, I'm in the middle of a video. Why are you still here? Fine, I'm out, bro. A lot of cars have indicators that you can detect if there is someone in your blind spot. Very helpful when changing lanes, but you still need to check over your shoulder. On your dash, you'll find the speedometer. This measures your speed in miles per hour. The tachometer is for measuring your engine's revolutions per minute. Tachometer? I'm pretty sure you mean taco meter. <sighs> Bro, now you got me hungry for tacos. Oh. Hey, who wants a taco? Brett's buying. I am, I am not buying. Keep it classy, Todd. There's a temperature gauge, and if it gets too hot, you might just be low on coolant. There's also an odometer that keeps track of your miles and a resettable mile counter for shorter trips. In the middle of your dash is your car's entertainment and airflow system. This symbol is the windshield defrost button, and the square one is the rear defrost button. Also, if you want rear defrost, there's a seat warmer. This dial is if you want the air blowing on you, and this one is for your feet. And this dial is for the volume of air, and this one for the temperature of it. Red is hot, blue is cold, and the AC button is for air conditioning. Cause you're hot, then you're cold. Each car has different settings for the radio, CD, or DVD player, and Bluetooth, so refer to your owner's manual for that. That's about it for basic buttons and controls. In another video, we'll go over how to set your seat, adjust your mirrors, and use your pedals. Hey, thanks for watching, and get defensive. Get defensive!